taking a deep breath. Yes. Good afternoon, everyone. We are live. Good morning, Shelly, and good morning, Kim. Good morning, Stephanie. How are you, ladies? Good, thank you. Taking a deep breath for technical difficulties. Shall we just <laughs> let that go? <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Absolutely. Well, welcome to Project Positive Planet. Today joining me is Shelly Lovitz, who is the author of Green Spas and Salons, amongst many other roles. Kim Collier, co-founder of Collier Concepts. Mm -hmm. Hi, ladies. And today is Planet-Based Healing. And Shelly is the guru in all things sustainability. We're happy to have you here, Shelly. Thank you. So nice to be here. I think we should all just start with a deep breath and release the tech challenges we had five minutes ago. <laughs> Hopefully everything comes through because Shelly's put together a great presentation for you all today. Thanks for being here on Friday, May 15th in the year 2020. Where are you coming to us from, Shelly? I'm in Oregon, Ashland, Oregon. And you fly to Lanai, Hawaii tomorrow, right? Right. I go back to the island where I work at Sensei. And uh, then I'll come back here for a few months and then go back there to reopen. Reopen the retreat. Aloha life. Stephanie and I are like ready to travel. We really are. Stephanie, remind, where are you coming to us from? In Virginia, right? Yes, I am in a rural part of Virginia. And how's, how's the audio, everyone? Can you let us know in the comments? I hear a little bit of background noise. Um, yeah, I'm grateful to be here with both of you today and learn from Shelly. Well, hello from Montana, Whitefish, Montana. And Shelly, is the PowerPoint cooperating today? Would you like me to start it? Yes, while well, we take one more deep breath, everybody. <laughs> oh, technology and connection and transition. Here we are, COVID 2000 to 2020. Things are reopening, and this sustainability presentation from Shelly helps us go beyond, although all the very important hygiene, sanitization, air quality, staffing, most important, guest experience, impeccable a health the health and wellness of our world relies on sustainability so shelly thank you for putting this together and for our audience everyone thank you for joining us this may say spies but it is actually some really great points operationally for all sectors of business and if we crystal ball look forward to the future more than likely those places that offer a variety of safe and healthy services in a one-stop shop will be very successful, not unlike local businesses, very successful. So Shelly, thank you for taking us on this sustainability with you today. You're welcome. Thank you for having me here. And yeah, sustainability, I think it's, I think we're gonna take a step back and then move forward into sustainability. I think it's definitely at the forefront of what's happening with this crisis because it's uh, very similar to things we're gonna have to deal with um, if we have so, uh, environmental crisis coming in the future. And so, I mean, there's a lot of good that's come out of this terrible time that we've been dealing with. But it's, uh, I think it's, it's, we're going to get, see a lot of positive things come out of it as well. Yes. So what I did is I just put together uh, a list of things that, that are uh, changing people are focusing right now in business uh -huh. and what we're doing in the spa. Uh -huh. So here is my top 10 list of, of things that are happening right now in the sustainability space. And obviously there's a shift in consumer mindset and expectations right now. And that's, you know, we're seeing that a lot, right? So we need to we'll be updating our sanitation, obviously, and our sustainability SOPs. How can we deal with this 
need for all these disposable masks and gloves, as well as try to keep things sustainable, right? So, you, I'm sorry to interrupt. It's a little bit difficult to hear you, Shelley. Do you still have that headset that we started our I do, I do, and I apologize. I'm, I'm hearing feedback as well. Are you? Distracting a little bit of garble. How about you, Stephanie, our listeners? Yes. Um, the sound for Shelly is, is we did the this morning. <laughs> Hopefully the headset, the headset will clarify that. Well, that, yeah, that's, I, no, it didn't, but I'm here. Can you hear me better? Yes. Is the volume better? Okay. Yes. Apologies for that. How's that? That's so much. Okay. And so to, to continue on, obviously right now, I hope everybody's out there working on their sanitation protocols and getting ready to reopen. And, and rely on CDC and the EPA has a really great list of sanitization products you can find, mm -hmm. as well as the environmental working group has just come out with some good, healthy, better alternatives to sanitization. Yes, I saw that. Thank you for mentioning that. And there's an iSpa has a great list as well. And uh, Universal Companies has uh, some uh, things they're doing. A lot of companies you'll see, you know, just following Facebook and social media, you see a lot of great tools out there that people have to offer. And I have that on some other slides as well. So, uh, also revisiting our product and treatment menu because um, we'll get into that, keeping it local, um, focusing on our local community. Um, obviously online classes is gonna be huge still and point of sale online and recommending our home care, wellness therapy and equipment for people's homes. Nice. And investing in energy savings. A lot of companies right now and beyond our industry, the spa industry, uh, are really focusing on their energy savings technology and rethinking the supply chain and concentrating on food security. So, and then last is just resetting our own priorities. What, that reset, that's the word. We're like, reset. this is the global reset. We're so, all resetting. We're all resetting, hopefully committing to sustainability in our actions, decisions, commitments moving forward. Mm -hmm. um, so the first one, obviously, I think most of you have heard this, that we're shifting in travel. It's going to be more local travel. Yes. Yes. So, uh, and, and as well, um, consumers are really hyper-focused on cleanliness and social distancing. So it's a whole nother world. I mean, we're trying to figure out how are we going to do facials? You know, massages. Good luck. And massages. Break in a toilet. <laughs> oh, did you see that video? That was hilarious. <laughs> the video circulating on the uh, massage yes. with all the tools and wearing the full suit. And yeah, that, let's hope it doesn't come to that, right? No, it's not coming to that. It's going to be better than that. Oh, yeah. yeah. To your second point about cleanliness and social distancing, specifically with cleanliness, you, all of us in hospitality and the guest experience industry, cleaning used to be where you don't want to see it. That has flipped, right? Yeah. Now yeah. it's uh, yeah. cleaning yeah. and good products used in the sanitization process with that clean air as well. Right. Because in, in the luxury market, you know, you hide everything behind closed doors even before we close. It's like, should we put the disinfectant wipes out on the counter so they can see them? Or, you know, yes. people do want to see them now. And um, also, people are going to be more mindful and selective with their choices. So, they are going to be supporting sustainable businesses even before this crisis. Yes. Sorry, I'm still getting feedback. Does it sound okay to you? It does. Okay. And yeah, so so that's it's really growing I and mean, it's becoming more much more important. So and then the second point is updating your 
website and sanitation and SOP. So we, right now we're working on that uh, at, at Sensei where I am. I'm sure all of you are as well. And thinking about your purchasing, you want to make your plan now. Order your supplies now. If, you know, if you try to order, everything's out of stock and it's going to take a while, especially if you are on an island waiting for two months to get your supplies anyway. Okay. So if you're going to be reopening soon, uh, you need to order now. It's my understanding about ordering and our personal responsibility as consumers and sustainable consumers, will we all start carrying our own mask? Fabulous, the, the gloves are coming back, ladies and men, gloves, matching hats, matching mask, <laughs> that all coming back. But to help sustainability, to think about that, where we're using our own and not having to rely on a place to have it because it's a requirement to enter some facilities like spas, health clinics, etc. But if they're out of those supplies, Will we travel with our own and is that more sustainable? That's my point. Right. Yes, for sure. Right. We will. And, and definitely um, you'll see on the ne next few slides, I'm recommending cloth masks over disposable right. and washing them. So we just, uh, I tried to estimate how many masks we need, how many gloves we need. So I'll talk about that. And so it's, um, yeah, it's important to think about these things now. For sure. And also sharing this on your uh, website and on your signage. Mm -hmm. like what, are, what is that going to look like? Mm -hmm. Being very transparent about what we're doing. I just got a, a message from my hairdresser here locally who's opening today for the first time in Oregon. And they have this whole list of things for clients to do before we come in. Like take a shower. <laughs> Yes. We're putting, our, putting our money in a bag. Put your money in a bag. A bag, in a bag to give to them, which is crazy. So yeah, it's it's a whole other world. And that's protocol. That makes perfect sense. It is yeah. a lot of protocol. Um, so here's some resources. Um, I think hopefully most of you have seen the iSpa reopening toolkit, which is a great toolkit. I'm sure you've even talked about this on your talks we've referenced you know, the ice you not in the spa wellness industry that's the international spa association i believe their website is experience i'll put it in the chat mm -hmm. yes and then the global wellness institute as well has a lot of companies uh, i'm sure you're seeing on your email getting flooded with emails and on facebook on a lot of people are offering great resources on reopening in, in every industry right so um anyway like i said i've been estimating how many masks we need uh different hand sanitizers a lot of the uh, personal care companies now are coming out with ha more hand sanitizers. We have a shout out for a company that has a moisturizing hand sanitizer. Shailen, I wanted to share this. Is that the Shankara? Yes. This is pure clean hand gel from Shankara. I haven't seen anything like it where it's disinfecting antiseptic and it, they say in 24 hour protection from germs because it coats. Mm -hmm. So we know the, the coating or a, a, a layer of protection to skin and cells. This is a really fabulous product. Just make sure you've got something that's sanitizing and hydrating as well. And this is a good option. Yeah, that's great. Great idea. Well, back to your glove idea, Kim. I like the idea when you were saying, you know, gloves are in now. That's a great idea for wearing the long gloves that also protect your skin from the sun. If, because if we're using oh, okay. a mask, why not a cloth glove? And that's just, sure. yes. That's what I, yeah, I wear cloth gloves now, the short ones. But now I just thought it would be great to be wearing the long ones for those of us in the hot climates. Yes. So I'm going to get me a I had a pair. I'm going to get me a pair of those. The sustainable <laughs> pair, let's all support our local thrift store. Shop local if you can to start stocking up on your fabrics for gloves. Yeah, so long gloves. My mom, my mom actually made me some masks um, <laughs> with her, with our limited sewing skills. I can't sew, so, um, but she made me some masks to wear. And 
So definitely cloth uh, re rewash. I ordered some masks from Noel Asmar. So I'm waiting for those, just three. I love how she has the print on it. A lot yeah. of other companies are doing a great thing as well. Hydrofacial and some others. Absolutely, I'm just so excited to interject. Stephanie, can you bring us up to the understanding of Noel's wonderful initiatives? I know she's one of your board members with uh, Caribbean We in, in your events. I remember seeing her on her uh, life cycle of clothing and sustainability initiative. That's excellent. Mm -hmm. Yes, and she will be on a um, future call for our Mindful Mondays um, series. She has come out with these amazing masks. And what we're realizing, our masks are actually a marketing opportunity now because they're on our face, right, constantly. So it's kind of going from the, the shirts now to the masks. So she does have brandable masks, and then she has um, a variety of fashionable face masks. Um, and she's very sustainable in all of her practices for her clothing, her equestrian line, ready to wear um, any of the multiple brands under Noel Asmar. I'm putting that in the chat for us as well. And oh, and let's, I'm gonna I'm gonna reach out to her and recommend that she make the long gloves. <laughs> I think that's a great idea. Yeah, yeah. Made in Canada. Um, so, you know, the disposable gloves, I looked for uh, sustainable eco gloves and the only ones I could really find, we really need somebody to manufacture these. Come on, people. Yes. Uh, are called, the brand is called Showa, but they're sold out. Right now, everything's just sold out. Um, and then for disinfectants, you know, a lot of people have taken the uh, barbicide talk or the um, rejuvenate talk through universal which is a uh, disinfectant so high level disinfectant that's the thing about you know being sustainable and eco-friendly and also for indoor air quality these disinfectants are really strong there are some alternatives that people are coming out with that are um, less toxic right so um, do your research on those. And I'm not going to recommend anything because frankly, I'm not even, I don't know that some of the ones that I have checked out actually really work, but I do kind of like the one that Universal Companies has. I have some around here somewhere. That's uh, the Rejuvenate, I believe is the brand. Ready Care also has um, available resources for dis disinfectants and uh -huh. hand sanitizer too. I know. Uh -huh. Many companies are running short. Um, right. Yes, that's a fact. We do order. We do order from Ready Care as well. For in the Hawaiian Islands, they're uh, they're closer. Yes. So, Save shipping. I can't find a disinfectant, but it is. Yeah. yeah. Is it Rejuvenate? Is that the one you have? Okay. And I, I think it's a hydrogen peroxide base. That is correct. So, Working more with oxi uh, oxi uh, oxygen. Yeah. Yeah. So um, anyway, there's a, disposables. A lot of the hospitality companies have them. Then we've got the UV air purifiers. Do your homework on that because a lot of these, we're not really sure that they're actually doing anything for the virus and they have to be used right. Um, and then water filtration systems. Uh, we are actually in the process of putting in more uh, drink flow water stations at Sensei. And uh, I know a lot of the uh, re resorts have them. They're uh, water stations, which are getting, trying to get away from the disposable bottles. So getting away from plastic bottles, getting away oh. from disposable bottles, what about the sanitization or the hygienic concern about refilling water bottles at water stations? How do we tackle that? Yep, that's, that's the challenge. That's a good question. Um, I don't know. It's, I guess, we, I mean, have to spray it off each time we use it or something. That's going to be how we're not, you know, not touching, not touching. So, I don't know. Um, what if the water came and you just didn't see it? Well, gosh. Yeah. So that's the thing that's unfortunately this, um, you know, being sanitary and, 
it is doesn't go hand in hand with sustainability. So just doing everything we can to think carefully about our choices. Right. Um, so also for our treatment menu. Yes. And well being the great news for uh, the spa and hospitality, the wellness industry is that it's really most of the people's lives now. That well being. So when this, uh, things get back to somewhat normal, uh, we, the industry will do well again because it's everybody's focused now, health and wellness. So we are in a good, um, good business for that, it's all important. But some treatments may, you may want to do more low touch treatments right. um, because, because of the concerns. Some guests still may not be comfortable with being really close like up in your face. Mm -hmm. um, so navigating that. Um, I always recommended halotherapy, salt room, salt therapy. It's really good for our respiratory system. So right now, if you can get into a salt room and do salt therapy, that's a great thing to do. And Stephanie, you had you had a, a talk on that, right? Yes. yes. We've had several talks about alternative treatments, and um, we did a poll yesterday, actually. Is my sound okay? Okay. We did a poll at, yesterday, and um, about 50% of the spas that were on are looking to repurpose rooms or are looking for alternative treatments around well-being. Hmm. Exactly. That's great. Um, and I've recommended this all along anyway, just to save water and save energy. Like um, steam rooms are wonderful, but what can we do uh, as an alternative? Salt room would be great. And infrared saunas are really good for the health. Um, better than steam, those save water. The detox body treatments, foot, tre foot treatments may become more popular because you're not as close to the face. Well, and they can be self prepared. Yeah, that's well, true. Fabulous tester bar, your samplers. Mm -hmm. You need a way to fill fill mm -hmm. water bowl, drain in an appropriate and uh, sustainable way. But yes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like um, some scrubs, body scrubs, and masks. Right, yeah. right. And also napping. You know, that's been. Uh, a trend for a few years and um, just letting them uh, rent rent the room yeah. or book, book some space, especially uh, where we are. We have hallways, which are big, beautiful spaces, like individual buildings mm -hmm. that people have. And so they just, they don't want to leave. They just want to be in there using the amenities and facilities, um, the garden, outdoor garden and showers, all private very individual so they can go in and spend a few hours and um you know bring bring them refreshments it's a really nice experience and uh meditation of course is huge right, right, right. now and we all need it more than ever right so great for the free apps that came up where you log on to calm or headspace and try those formats mm -hmm. and or it, also, or, I to add to this virtual, uh, going to a spa virtually, that's a huge revisit to the treatment menu. For example, uh, for example, Six Senses Resorts, this Sunday, uh, it's on my Facebook page, Kim Collier. Uh, there is an invitation through Six Senses and some of their practitioners, their health, wellness, healing practitioners, Stephanie, one of which is Cord Cohen. He's doing I saw that. Yes. Wonderful. Yeah. Free for healing. So this is amazing. A spa day with six senses virtually this Sunday. So maybe it'll spark some ideas for our, our wellness. And they are a leader in sustainability also. So they are. I love that brand. I I'm very impressed with Great. what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Um so and then the other thing is more more one on one sessions and classes. Uh, yes. For, for your treatment menu. So then let's go to the next point. So the next thing is keeping it local. Uh, unfortunately for all of these 
wonderful places we love to travel to. Maybe we'll be going less, like we were talking about the other day, Kim, taking less trips, longer trips, staying longer. Road trips. Uh, road trips. And yes. what we've, been, we've been discussing on our travel calls, we kind of took travel, I think, for granted, us that were always in the air all the time, and it'll be more impactful when we do travel and, and more appreciated, kind of like anything right now in life. That's true. That's true. They'll be it'll be much more special, and we'll, we'll stay longer, so it'll be more uh, slow travel, the slow travel trend. So it's also more sustainable and more affordable. So we're not taking all those trips, air trips back and forth, right? Right. And hey, here's a quick uh, check in with you, ladies. How much is gas where you live right now? Oh, what I know. For dollar thirty seven a gallon, U.S. Wow. Up here. Wow, that's crazy. Um, yeah, so we're, you know, it's it's a good thing in a way. Um, I love to travel. I'm a travel junkie. You know, I love to go. And it's, I'm uh, changing, you know, that's changing. Yes. So, so definitely people will be flying and staycations uh, are going to be popular. So definitely focus on your local community no matter where you are. Absolutely. Quick question on that previous slide, Shelley. Do you all think, and with your experience with travel, Stephanie, on your webinars, will people be required to stay in an Airbnb for two weeks? <laughs> that be slow travel, but that just seems like a very oh. slow. I read an article this morning. It, there's a lot of combativeness happening right now in this in the states, particularly on the East Coast, because summer is their season, um, particularly in the Northeast. So if they miss their season, I hate to use the word, but they're kind of screwed um, yeah. and lost the entire year. So, you know, in some states right now, they're saying minimum 30, 30 day stays, no short terms. Um, so it's going to be some interesting things that happen in the next week as states and cities start to push back against government. I think there's going to be some a lot of rebellion, not aggressive rebellion, just people saying, this is what I need to do, and we're doing it. Even in my own state, Virginia, Virginia Beach has said, we don't really care. We're opening for Memorial Weekend. We don't care what the governor says, and that's the largest city in the state of Virginia, yes. um, where Richmond has said, we're not opening until June, and asked the governor to, to extend. But Richmond is much more of a commerce city versus a um, really a vacation destination. So it's going to be interesting city to city, state to state to see what happens, regulations versus what people need to do to get by. Yeah. Hawaii is really strict. And they're like, when I go back tomorrow for two weeks to um, put my stuff in storage, I have to be quarantined for two weeks. I can't go out of the house. And the police will come check on me. So if I get arrested, <laughs> I would call my friends and say, come get me. <laughs> you don't so hear from you. <laughs> I'm on a really small island and it's and yeah, they they keep pushing back the time for people to be able to travel there. But they're also I'm on the only island there that doesn't have any cases. Are you going to Kauai? Hmm? Are you going to Kauai? Lanai. Lanai. Okay. Yeah, this is off the coast of Maui. There's yeah. It's interesting. I mean, I'll tell you everything up from Maine down. It's gonna be it's gonna be an interesting couple of weeks. Yeah, for sure. And uh, I almost bought a condo in Hawaii a few months ago, and I'm glad mm -hmm. I did in Maui <laughs> because it would be sitting empty right now. So, right. Um, but prices yeah. will definitely there'll be better deals happening for sure. But um, it's yeah, it's it's sad. It's really sad. But we're we're getting through it, and um, it's really I think these even these Zoom calls and all of the online education that we've all been doing. I think it's some ways it's bringing us closer together and giving us this time to connect where we don't have time before. So right. I think, you know, 
So um, anyway, but locally, um, local community is huge, focusing on the local market, offering day passes, day experiences for your urban areas. Um, because as we can see now, I know for the Caribbean, it's the same. Uh, how do we make the community more resilient and less dependent on tourism? You know? And um, we, sustainability is kind of driving leaner business models anyway to withstand hard times. So how do we become, make our businesses more sustainable? And, uh, and making wellness more accessible to everyone. Mm -hmm. More affordable. Um, also just focusing on the community events, like doing beach cleanups. Mm -hmm. We're gonna do that um, all over the world. And support your local farmer. Support That's, your local farmer. Yes, yes. Did you wanna talk about that, the hemp farms? Well, the Renaissance in terms of sustainability and local and community, absolutely support and do what you can locally, shop locally. Uh, that's more important now than ever. Mm -hmm. But referencing back to last week's webinar, where we also were talking about uh, hemp, this is the book I'm reading right now by Doug Fine. It's The American Hemp Farmer, and it's just fabulous. It just was published uh, the end of last year. He is a renegade organic farmer, gardener, uh, and journalist, fabulous writer. But to the local economy point, he says, put simply, he references Colin Murray, president of American Independent Business Alliance. He said, put simply, a multiplier effect creates local wealth and local health. So that multiplier of spending our money locally really amplifies that spend within a region. And that's sustainability at its best. Mm -hmm communities we yeah, help. every dollar we spend equals three dollars recycling in the community right. versus uh, amazon but in living on a tiny island with little access to anything is uh, is hard to be sustainable right. <clears throat> um, okay so the other thing is obviously these online wellness classes i think these are Probably here to stay. What do you think, ladies? Oh, man. <laughs> anybody having Zoom overload, webinar overload? Anybody? Yeah. Definitely. I can't. I don't have time. I'm still working remotely, so I haven't had time to join all these amazing workshops. Oh. Well, and the idea with ours is we've been recording them, so hopefully they live after this and they're still relevant um, if people want to go back and rewatch. Um, but for sure, there's, and I would say just, you know, don't feel like you have to be a part of everything. I sign up for everything, and if I have time, I'll go back and watch. <laughs> yeah. um, but I think it's impossible to join everything. You just have to find what suits you and shut the screen down sometimes. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah, thank goodness for the replays. But yes, agree with you, Shelly. Online classes, uh, everything online, here to stay. Um, in terms of sustainability, uh, Parsons School of Design in New York has the most amazing materials lab in that where they catalog everything with sustainability. They have started a $50 course, $50 US, and it's based on sustainable build home building targeted for the affordable housing market so if we can really dig in dive deep and enjoy and enrich our knowledge with some of these online classes and then begin to bring these sustainability initiatives into our communities what a blessing from new york city to wherever you are in the world with parsons school of design check that out Oh, that's a great resource. Thank you. Yeah, I love, um, I also have always, well, with my green building background as well, I've um, I've always wanted to build a tiny house. So that's next on my list, tiny house. And there's some very cool ones out there. Right there with you. Yeah. So um, anyway, you can, you know, for business-wise, I mean, people are doing this now, starting to do this offering wellness retail items to use at home, um, you know, bringing 
your therapists and staff, your fitness people are offering online coaching and classes. Like we're having weekly classes. We've seen that. Um, so people want the connection. This is it's been a lifesaver. Can you imagine if we didn't have internet going through this? Isolation, loneliness, and yeah. just we were fortunate for the wild, wild, wild web. Yeah, and when we come out of this, people are going to be hungry for that. So they're going to want to come come in to your business. But I, I would definitely keep keep this uh, and build this part of your business, no matter no matter what. And the beauty boxes, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people are that's a growing market. Well, and that's a phenomenal business model subscription. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So why not your your place of business doing this? Or cooperating with other boxes, but yeah. coming is that a sustainable model? Local cooperative, Kim, you are full of good ideas. I'm writing this down. <laughs> I, you said that. <laughs> I know, but then, then you said something, and then it just you know it kept going. So local cooperative boxes. There's well, another business idea. Uh, I love yes. it. Shelly, I think you came up with that one, or it's okay, divided. we'll share. We'll share. Well, we all need to share and this is open source because I do believe through this challenge, we've still been inspired to think differently, be creative and come up with options that are, it, it, you know, for a lifeline for all of us and more local and sustainable. Yeah. Well, I'm thinking a local cooperative box. That's cool. Yeah. To get the different businesses together in downtown Main Street. You all put in a little item and... Yeah. <laughs> okay. Cool. Um, so, anyway, this kind of follows what we were talking about uh, on the uh, online classes and point of sale, like recommending home therapy and equipment. And um, like home care consultations, home care spa in a box, right. <clears throat> fitness gear, sustain cool. sustainability boxes. Well, and in the terms along the lines of sustainability, uh, with this is a completely out of the box question, but it just came to me. Here we are relying on the, the web to connect us. Then we have technology here, home therapy and equipment. That again relies on electricity. Where are we with solar energy? I know this is a little bit out. Do you talk about that at all in your presentation? Uh, a little bit. Mm -hmm. No. Okay. Oh, here we go. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, where are we at with more solar power? I think every car in the world needs to have a solar panel on the roof. It's growing. And Good. we uh, our company actually ordered uh Teslas for I mean that's kind of high end, but for people to drive a luxury market. But um yeah, solar is really growing. Solar PV. So oh, is hot water. <clears throat> Is, is solar energy from a sustainability perspective too expensive for at this point? No, the prices actually have really come down okay. a lot. It, it is really growing. You don't hear as much about it as you used to because it's just people are just doing it, mm -hmm. you know, and um, it's really, you know, especially in a crisis, and with the climate and with thinking about sustainability, we really need to go this, this way, especially with, you know, our extreme weather, you know, um, post hurricanes and floods and, um, you know, the electricity is down all over. It's you know, it's more resilient and self-sustainable. So really uh, check it out because prices have really come down okay. and a lot of businesses are doing, are doing this. And as well as the um, electric cars, occupancy sensors, which are energy savings, uh, a lot of, a lot of new technology to save and save so much money. Why wouldn't you do it? Right. After that initial investment, the payback ROI is, is uh, is much smaller. The timeline, the payback is much quicker than it used to be. It used okay. to take 20 years to pay back your PV cost of installation. You know. um, and every every state is different. So, okay. um, every area. 
region. So the other thing is rethinking the supply chain. So this, we have found out if you have been out there buying toilet paper and hand sanitizer, there's nothing, right? So we have realized our supply chain uh, is, is risky, especially if you live on an island. Okay. And so what can you source from local producers and suppliers? And this is part of sustainability is the local community, uh, you know, buying from local businesses. Like what can you make or what can you source that's locally? Yes, yes. Uh, like what connections and what um, cooperative can you bring together right, to right. do something for locally? And um, it also saves a lot of money, a lot of shipping. If you've been dealing with shipping costs, it's crazy. Like to send anything to, to an island, say where I am, could be $100 just for the shipping costs. That's more than the item itself. So um, I, I think, you know, definitely trying to figure out how to grow things locally mm -hmm. and, and you know, supply them. Well, with this crisis, this pandemic, globally, as I understand it, the stores that are the busiest are the hardware stores. Mm. People building their own planner boxes are really be looking at doing what they can within their own food security. Right. Really, so that circular economy or that simplicity of life. Right. And having, knowing your own food security is right there with a the little garden that you're growing because yes, as you mentioned, the supply chain, it might be something coming from you know, another country. So bring it local question on your PowerPoint, the circular economy LCA, what does that stand for? Right. That's the um, LCA. That's a way of looking at what you buy and the economy. And right. it's um, so it's a supply chain. So from, it's like from cradle to cradle versus cradle to grave, if you're familiar with that. Cradle to cradle. Um, so it's a life cycle, LCA's life cycle assessment or life cycle analysis is another way. They're a little different. But that will say buying something from the raw materials, from the manufacturing to the use, to the end life, which is either recycling, repurposing, or right. throwing it in the landfill. So the circular economy, this it's funny, they it's a new term for what's been around for years, LCA, but now they're calling it a circular economy. Things always um, come around again with a new cool term to describe it. But, so I really like this actually, um, because I think it's more, um, people get it more and, and will maybe adopt it more. But well, we can relate to it. We, you know, it's life is full circle. Mm -hmm. it's life, life. circle of life. And, and DNA and it's all circular. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's uh, basically thinking about the economy from beginning to end. And, and it also has the, the local um, aspect to it as well. That brings to the my I'm sorry to interrupt, Shelley. I was just thinking of the island of Japan. As I and we hosted Japanese students, exchange students, for several summers in our home years ago here in Montana, and they would tell us that anything that was developed on the island in a product supply chain in the concept phase, they had to face it all the way through into the next what it would become. Exactly. Every piece of of item and product design. I thought that was just absolutely brilliant. So yeah. that, that box that we're packaging uh, an oil in, you know, and have it be a reusable box or something that's sustainably made as well and has a purpose beyond its initial purpose. Yes, uh, packaging is a huge issue in the personal care industry, um, huge. And, and I'm, you know, I have so many little samples and plastic bottles. I know I've said it before, I'm a product junkie. I have so many little plastic bottles, which I feel really bad about. But, so you know. your beautiful resort where you are, Sensei in Lanai, Hawaii, have you done away with plastic bottles and you just have the dispensers in the... That's what, yeah, we're, uh, that's what we're working towards, which will happen, I think, when by the time we reopen. We've, we've really tried hard to, to not to do that. Um, 
So we are looking at the alternative. And also, and not just giving people their own bottles, but providing um, some recyclable aluminum bottles, but definitely getting, getting away from plastic. With your logo on them? Uh, yeah, no, yeah, not probably eventually. We do have some that the guests get when they check in, but, uh, but for the whole, for everybody, even the, the team. And we have our own bottles and um, we are also trying to source amenities and that's difficult. Like how do you keep, like the little, you know, alternatives for toothpaste and for deodorant, how do you get individual small sizes without all that plastic packaging, but also make it sanitary? Oh my gosh. You, know, you can't like those little toothpaste bites. We're trying to think if anybody has a solution for this, we're trying to figure out how do we do that instead of toothpaste tubes, but how do you make it sanitary? What do you do, wrap them all in? In a craft paper. Yeah, yeah, that would take a lot of time though. So maybe somebody uh, could. Well, that that would be a single serving for, from, yeah, that would take a lot of time. Yeah, I should just call the company and say, hey, can you wrap these in? I wanna, one of our partners, I wanna give them a shout out, Woo Bamboo, they're a sustainable, Kim met them at Forbes Travel Guide. They're a sustainable toothbrush um, made of wood. Oh. And you would love them, Shelly. And they individually packaged the toothbrush with toothpaste tablets. Which oh, okay. I've been looking at bamboo toothbrushes, so thank you. I ordered some, but the yeah. one, oh, they have tablets in them. Okay, cool. Yeah, so everything they do is is sustainable and it's an incredible company and they're they're fun. I'll, I'll cool. Yeah, thank you. And they do have the little toothpaste bites in the craft paper. That's where I'd seen it. Perfect. Perfect. That's what I've been looking Ritz, for. Ritz Carlton carries them um in their property, um, the Ritz Reserve in Puerto Rico. And they have them in all the spas um, as an amenity and the hotel rooms. Great. Right. Perfect. And I have, and they last forever. They're not just like a one time, you know, those cheap brushes you get. They're actually something you would use for the proper amount of time. Let's I don't know. Tell Dennis about, Two months. Let's tell Dennis about that. Quit passing out the plastic. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Thank you. Yeah. I found some bamboo brushes, but not with the tablet. So that's awesome. I appreciate that. Um, okay, and then we did touch on food security. That is huge. And uh, right now, that is the main focus for businesses globally is uh, reducing food waste. Currently, we, we waste about 30% of our food. And um, obviously growing local food, victory gardens. Is a victory garden a community garden? It's a victory gardens are, are what, after the war or during the war, everybody, years ago, like our grandparents' time, people grew gardens. And they called them victory gardens. And to, because there was no food, no access to food, no supply chain. So everybody was encouraged to grow a garden. And I think that's kind of what's happening right now. A lot of people are out there. Growing food, wouldn't that be, and then it, very sustainable. I mean, we, sh we shouldn't be putting in lawns or, you know, all these pesticides. We should be growing food gardens in our front yard. And backyard. Another shout out to an angel in Los Angeles. Uh, I will look it up and put it in the chat, but he is done just that, Shelly. He converted his, the city area in front of his home in Los Angeles. He made it a garden. And the city said, there's nothing we can do about it. You know, it's fine. He said, just don't spray it. That's all I'm asking. Don't spray it. Yeah. And so many people coming and flourishing with his garden. And he's done a phenomenal TED Talk. Ted Finley. That's who it is. Ted Finley. Oh, yeah. That sounds familiar. I know there's a few people who've done amazing things like that. That's wonderful. Now it's all about teaching the children about gardening. Yeah, it should be part of our education system for sure. Sustainability, right? That's right. Go play in the greenhouse, kids. Yeah. And, and learning all these skills. Also, people are, you know, teaching your kids. I saw something on Facebook about the list of things we should be teaching our kids rather than sitting there in front of a computer screen, right? Like how to change the oil in a car and how to 
fix things and cook things and yes so. it, it's an initiative we're actually about to launch with global wellness institute wellness for children um, and work yeah and working with kids um either they're growing because you know how the kids always have these fundraisers with candy bars or wrapping paper well what if they were growing their own vegetables and reselling those for their fundraisers or giving a portion of those back to the community for food banks perfect that's a smart thing to do for sure great why didn't anybody think of that sooner huh <laughs> candy, candy, candy. By Jim and all these great talks we've been having I, I thought well let's teach them a useful skill and something they can contribute back to their communities exactly. and they all want extra credit or volunteer hours this would be a great program oh, i love that idea i'm gonna write that down Maybe you can bring it to Hawaii. I well, oh, that's the other. I forgot to mention. Uh, actually, part of our company, Sensei, is uh, we have a hydroponic farm that we we grow vegetables for the community, for the island and beyond. So part of Sensei is we've got retreats, we've got IT and tech, health tech, and we've also got the um, agriculture. So the one of the focuses is on growing food for the island so we're feeding the island right now very cool. maybe yeah. we can put the link in here to the property and give you all a, a shout out shelly mm -hmm. is it sensei.com sensei mm -hmm. and we're in the process of a little bit of relaunching rebranding which is exciting because we are a partner right now of four seasons yeah i saw that that's incredible mm -hmm. It's a beautiful property. You really have to come visit. Oh, it's amazing. Well, we need to see you all on Travel Tuesdays. Yeah. Yeah. We keep travel to... dreaming. Sorry, Stephanie, go ahead. I was just going to say our focus is to keep travel dreaming. So it's definitely a property we can dream about. Oh, oh, oh it's, it's amazing. I, I am so grateful and blessed to be working in such a beautiful place. And it is paradise. It really is. It's like the Garden of Eden. That's how I describe it. But so what are farms? Fig leaves? What's that? What oh, are yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I have yeah. That yeah, yeah. No, we're not allowed to wear those. We have to wear our uniforms. <laughs> Good idea. Well, we're getting some really great comments as we round up. Um, Nancy says, thank you so much, ladies. Uh, Regina's really been active and uh, talking about, she was glad to learn about the bamboo toothbrushes. Uh, Kash, forgive me if I'm not saying this right, Miss Evans, it's Kashana uh, was also delighted about the bamboo tip on that. And we've also been chatting also just to really take it down to, uh, some really good references in our chats here, but Kashana says, when restaurants reopen, I prefer better technologies to tip service rather than carrying cash. I've really, so get it. That's just one thing about sustainability as we really want to generate a uh, good community, go local, yeah. uh, coming to this point here about not having to have cash. What I've thought about in my heart and see how you all resonate with this, are we all appreciating a simpler life now? And maybe we don't need as much cash, or maybe if you take that credit card, you're gonna like think, do I really need to spend that? And um, it's just sustainability in terms of us preserving our connection to the divine, a real simple life. And maybe we've all been blessed with an opportunity to slow down and just appreciate what sustainability really is and sustaining our energy and how we put our energy and love into the world. I don't know. It's been a very potent couple of months as we come to the end of, of uh, COVID and things are reopening. And Shelly, your presentation on sustainability brings us all home to really think about what's important, what's really it's important. It's true. And we realized we don't need all those things that we buy that we think uh, we like. Did any, did uh, any of you take the science of well-being class? The Yale science oh, of well-being. I. It's on the list. It's yeah. it's it's really interesting. It talks about what really makes us happy, and 
how we're miswanting what we think is going to make us happy really doesn't. It's interesting. You should check it out. I'm putting yeah. it in the chat. It's yeah. a uh, Corsica is uh, the platform. They have a lot of free classes from universities. Um, Corsica, and I always, I want to call it Corsica. I wrote that down. Um, Coursera. It's Coursera. I always want to say Coursera. I put it in the chat. C O U R S E R A. Excellent. It's, miracle. it's a science of well being. Millions of people have taken that in the last month or two. And uh, anyway, so yeah, we set your priorities. We're making our personal wellness and sustainability um, a priority. And we're making new time and energy priorities. So definitely take, I know, um, hopefully we've all had time to reboot and rest. We're going to bloom where we are. And we're here for what we have. I'm very grateful to be in a place um, where I am, you know, in a beautiful place. Nature nourishes us right now. It's the only thing really that seems to be nourishing us besides these great webinars. <laughs> Uh-huh. You're making me want to go hug a tree. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm blessed to be in Oregon. It's so beautiful. We have lots of wonderful trees and places to walk. So very lucky. Reset. Stephanie, have you seen trees? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Have you seen trees? Yes. Have you seen trees? Yes. Not hugged any trees, but I'm really enjoying seeing the, the birds. Um, Floating around here and taking walks. Um, we have some beautiful beaches in Virginia, water. Yes, elements. So, when are you, sorry, when are you able to go back to the Caribbean? Or when are we able to go? What a little off in the air? <laughs> <laughs> Something we've been discussing a lot. Um, it's it's going to be interesting. Um, the airlift has to entire, you know, has to return. So they've canceled 90% of flights around the world. Um, so refiguring out those routes is going to be the first step. Um, luckily, quite a few countries in the Caribbean are COVID free. Um, the concern is now opening the border and having people come in. So I think there's been announcements made for resorts and Hopeful that quite a few properties will open in June. Um, but how exactly that happens with flights and quarantines and COVID tests um, is going to take a little time to, to play out. And every country will have their own, I think, um, protocol and regulations to get that done. Yes. Yeah, we're hoping to go to Greece if we can in July, if they let us. I know that you're home away from home. Yeah, I haven't seen our house there in a year. So. Oh, my gosh. Hope well, it's I know, still standing. <laughs> well, I know um, we were all together just in November in the Bahamas, mm -hmm. and who could have thought um, during that event or after this event how drastically different our worlds would be. Yeah. Wow. Mother Nature got a sense of humor. Yeah, she's like, oh, I'm just gonna put you all inside for a while. <laughs> so I'm heading out. Need a break. She needs a break. So hopefully we've learned our lesson. We're learning our lesson <laughs> a little bit. There's, there's always, as we're this is po project positive planet. There's always yeah. some positive things to take out of any hardship, and um, for sure. Yeah. Great, grateful to have such a wonderful tribe with you ladies, Shelly. Thanks for being with us and all of the best wishes in Hawaii. Thank you. It's so good to see you. And thank you for all you're doing. You're really doing a lot, bringing a lot of people together, both of you ladies. So. And thank you, Ken, for being my co-sister in the planet-based healing. I love it. I love you. And we didn't get to share our slides at the beginning, so I'll just make sure everybody understood what we were chatting about today. So it was Planet-Based Healing, Episode 5 on Sustainability in 2020 and onward. It's a Project Positive Planet webinar, which is a collaboration of wellworld.tv, 
um, Caribbean weed and Papilia. And in case you didn't know the lovely ladies that were joining me today, it was Kim Collier, co-founder of Collier Concept, Billy Lotz, author of Green Spas and Salon, and I am Stephanie Brest, founder of We Consulting in Caribbean Weed. And this was brought to you by Collier Concept. Yay! Delighted to collaborate. And to wrap up. Thank you ladies so much. Thank you so much. Good to see you. You too. Let's do, let's do some beach. We'll do some beach cleanups next year. Yeah, I'm all about. Well, I'm, I'm gonna. I'll co-sponsor. So let's put that together. And awesome. I'm happy to come to Hawaii to help you with a beach cleanup. If yes. You want. yes. <laughs> Sounds, good. <laughs> Sounds good. Yes. Yeah, we'll do some planning. We can cut, maybe do some talks. Yeah. Oh yeah. The massage turtle. Kim can come do some training. Absolutely. <laughs> Kim, you have Shelly's book handy. Do you want to share? Yeah. I to mention that there will be one lucky winner of Shelly's book for today's uh, webinar. So uh, we'll, be, we'll be in touch with, with the winner. Uh, and we thank you all so much for attending and being with us on Planet Based Healing this beautiful Friday of 2020. Grateful to you, ladies. Have a great weekend. Thank you, everybody. Take care. Be well. Bye.